People have a bigger devil than they have a God. And what that means is they're not possessed. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying they see the devil as bigger than God. Now, no Christian would admit that. They don't say that stuff. You know, well, yeah, the devil's bigger than God. But they're more afraid of what the devil can do to them than they are of how God can protect them. And now, part of this from protection is in the DHT manual because if it's part of it, because you need to know if you're going to go lay hands on the sick and go minister to people, you need to know you're protected. And yet I get it all the time. Well, if I cast the devil out, what if it jumps on me? Okay, if you got the power to cast it out, it ain't going to jump on you. Right? Now, I'm not saying it won't, you know, mess with you. Okay? But it's, listen, you have to understand, it's not like God is here and the devil's here. I mean, it's more through the roof and below the ground. You can't even see how distant they are. And God's power is so much stronger. See, you've got to understand, he gave us promises of protection. All the way from, even through the Old Testament, when people belonged to the devil, God protected them. Now, if he can protect them when they belong to him, how much more should we be protected? He said, well, how come this, how come the devil always does this? Because you let him. Now, people say, well, no, I I don't let him. He just does this thing. No, no, no. You have to understand. Whatever he does to you, you allow. That's why he does it. That's why, especially if it's constant. If there's just one thing after another, he has found a person that will let him run over them. That's why we have to grow up to look like Jesus, act like Jesus, talk like Jesus, believe like Jesus. And I want to show you some protection aspects today. So, but first off, let's just get this settled. He said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, that he gave his disciples authority over the devil, over all the ability of the devil. And notice what that says. Behold, I give you power, authority, to tread on serpents and squirrels. To tread on. That's a military term. It has the idea of actually marching in rank and file, and they come upon this thing, and every soldier that comes behind them just keeps smashing this thing down. It's not just a one-time deal, oh, I get to go over and stomp on it. No. You're so focused on where you're going and what you're supposed to be doing that anything of the devil that gets in your way, you just walk on it. You don't have to worry about it biting you. You don't have to worry about doing anything. No, he said here, he gives you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, all, not some, all the ability, the power of the enemy. Notice what he calls him, the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now that word nothing there means nothing, exactly what it says. But the way the Greek presents it, it it is so much stronger than just saying, oh, and nothing will hurt you. You know, that's what you tell a child when they're afraid of the dark or something. Oh, don't worry, nothing's going to hurt you. No, no, that's not what he's saying here. It's as if he would be yelling it and saying, no, nothing by any means, not at all, not in any way shall ever be able to hurt you. Now you say, well, Okay, Lord, let me just put it to you this way. you got to make a choice. You either know that Jesus was the truth and told the truth, or you call him a liar. Because people look and go, well, but the devil's sure hurting a lot of people. Mm -hmm. People that don't believe this. But when you believe it, it flips on the switch in you, which puts out that protection, and you start believing. See, nothing happens without you believing. What you believe is what you get. If the devil's always attacking you, you believe he can always attack you. That's what you believe. And you say, no, but I I fight against the devil. You can fight against the devil, but still believe he will attack and hurt you. But we have to get to the place where we know that he cannot touch us. Even the Old Testament prophets knew that. 
They sent an army after a prophet. And he goes out in the middle of them. And then his servant, what are we going to do? Uh, there's more for us than against us. He said, what do you mean by that? Look at the army. No, no, no. Open your eyes and look toward the hills. And he saw the armies and the chariots and the angels and everything there. What? He had no fear of the natural man because he knew that God protected him. David went up against the bear and the lion. Then he went up against Goliath. I mean, Goliath was a giant. And David said, no, he won't be anything other than like the bear and the lion. I have a covenant with God. He doesn't. I win. So we have to realize these Old Testament saints walked more like New Testament sons than most New Testament sons do. Beloved, that's not right. God is trying to get across to us something. He's trying to say, look at my son. Do you realize all the plotting and planning and all the stuff they tried to do to Jesus, and they couldn't do it? Why? Because Jesus had an appointment with that cross. 